We are on lesson 4.4. We're going to be covering perpendicular lines. And in particular, the new concept we're going to be covering uh, at this moment is going to be the concept of what is a perpendicular bisector. So that's just a fancy word that says it's a um, that a line, when it cuts another line, it's going to cut it exactly in half and be perpendicular. So uh, if this is the first time you're encountering that word, all perpendicular means is that the line is going to, first of all, create a 90 degree uh, uh, angle with the other line. And not only that, it's going to cut it exactly in half. So what that means is uh, if we have this line here, line AB, right, from, from point A to point D, right, this distance here is going to be the same as from D to point B. Right, and so uh, the perpendicular bisector in this case is going to be line C D. Right. Now you might be wondering why are there so many more lines to this? Well, it's saying because this perpendicular bisector, right, this line, this line C D right here. Let me, let me move it around. This line C D, right, because it's in the, it's right in the middle, right smack in the middle of uh, of line A D. Right. Any, if you draw any point, right. In this case, we drew E, F, G, and H. No matter which point you draw, if you drew a line from this middle point to either point A or B, it's going to be equidistant, right? You're essentially creating an isosceles triangle. But uh, in any case, those sides are going to be equal. That's what it means. Now, if that was confusing to you, uh, maybe read the theorem or uh, go through the proof here but sometimes it's it might be worth just jumping into the problem so that's what we're going to do on this next page here uh, where we're given this picture here and we are told that CE right this line right here is the perpendicular bisector of segment FG what that means is that whatever FG whatever the length of FG is it cuts it exactly in half this side well, that's a terrible line. Uh, this side right here from F to D is going to be equal to the length from D to G. Now, um, you don't have to do this every time, but we're going to kind of create these little mini proofs, uh, just like in the example above here, right? Um, and this might seem like overkill to some of you because um, for a lot of you, just just looking at this and seeing that distance uh, DG is 9, you'll you'll say, well, Mr. Kim, FD is also 9. It's obvious. But um, because it's the first time we're going through it, we do want to kind of write out a mini proof for it. So the first thing we have to establish is that um, is the perpendicular bisector theorem. And, and basically what we're going to say is we're going to establish the fact that FD or segment FD is equal to segment. Uh, let's change the color actually to make it a little bit more more sense. D, G. So what we're saying is this line right here from D to G, right? This segment right here is equal to the segment uh, from F to D right here. Okay, so um, if I can kind of break this out, right? F, D, right, is equal to D, G, right? And that's because of the perpendicular bisector theorem perpendicular bisector theorem okay now that we've established that we also are given the fact that dg is equal to 9 so let's go ahead and write that dg or segment dg maybe i should have made that red let's go ahead and do that and make it red um, dg okay is equal to Let's go back to the pen is equal to nine, and that's given right uh, above. They wrote that from the figure we have, but I'm just going to write given because it is given for us right here. DG is equal to nine, and then lastly, if we substitute nine for where DG is, we can finally say that segment FD is equal to nine by uh, substituting substitution. Okay, now that was a lot of work. We're not going to do that every single time. And in fact, 
I think that's the last time we're going to do that for now. Um, uh, and we're going to just, you know, kind of reason our way through the rest of this, right? We are also told that CG, right? So let me, let's change colors here. CG, which is from right here to right here. CG, or this this segment right here, uh, or that's the unknown, right? But we are told the segment FC. Right, let me change the color here. Let's go to FC. This segment here is eight, right? And so if what we, uh, if the bisector, uh, perpendicular bisector theorem is true, then we have to conclude that whatever this is, whatever this is, let me see, whatever the, let me see, okay, pen wasn't working there for a second, whatever this is, is going to be equal to the red one, right? In fact, it is, it's going, it should be, and so we can say that CG is equal to, oh my goodness, I can't write, CG is equal to also eight, since, F C is also equal to eight. Okay, now here's the last one. I feel like question three should have come directly after question one. They want to know um, F G. So they want to know what is the length of the distance from F to G coming all the way down here, right? This purple part, right? Uh, from here to here, what's the What's the distance? Well, if we know that this bottom part is 9 and this top part is 9, we'll just add them together. FG should be, uh, FG is equal to 18. Okay? Uh, hopefully that made sense to you guys. Um, but uh, if it doesn't, you might need to spend some more time with a tutor. Okay? Um, in this explain 1C part, um, there we're going to go, uh, we're going to, sorry, we're going to get into... Um, proving the perpendicular bisector theorem using reflection, and, and specifically, we're going to be uh, we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem to find some of these things, right? If you don't remember what the Pythagorean theorem was, it's uh, a squared plus b squared uh, equals c squared, uh, and this this actually goes along with. Let me see. This is actually going to go along with uh, this triangle over here, right? And the Pythagorean theorem says if you take if you take this side a and you square it, and then also you take b and you square it, it's going to equal the hypotenuse squared, right? And um, using that theorem, if we know at least two of the sides of a right triangle, you can always find the third side. And later on in trigonometry, you'll find that it doesn't always have to be a right triangle. There's a formula for it, but uh, for now, we're only going to be working with right triangles. Okay, so um, let's use this to find uh, CR. Okay, so um, the hardest part about this is identifying uh, what kind of triangle to draw. Now, they want to know CR. We want to know from here to here, right? And uh, what is that distance? Well, if you bear with me, if I drew a triangle like this, right? Or if I drew a line from there to there, and from here to here, right? I have effectively created another triangle. You see that? So, um, this is going to be C, this is going to be Q, this is going to be R. And uh, where did I get those letters? Well, well, I got them from here, right? C, Q, and R, as you can see. Um, we are told that uh, CQ is 8 and QR is 15. And we just need to know what this guy is, what the hypotenuse is. Well, according to the Pythagorean theorem, uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let me, let me drag this over here a little bit so we can see it. And essentially, we have the A and the B, right? We have the A and the B. Uh, the A is going to be the 8. The B is going to be uh, the 15. And that will tell us what C squared is. I'm just going to write C squared for now. 8 squared is 64. And 15 squared is what? Um, ew, what is 15 squared? Um, let me punch out a calculator real quick. Or let me just do it by hand. 15 squared. I don't know this by uh, by memory. What is it? Um, let me see. One, 
Uh, Hold on, sorry folks. Can't add here. Or can't multiply here. Oh my god. Uh, I have two little kids running around, so it's a little hard to focus. 25, and 75, and then uh, 15, uh, 225. Okay, goodness gracious, 225. Uh, equals C squared. And then if you add 64 to 225, what do you get there? Hmm. 9, uh, 8, 289. Goodness gracious. Okay, so we're going to use a calculator to find the square root of 289. Uh, let's see. Give me a second here. Where's my calculator function? Um, where's my calculator? Right. Oh, this one doesn't have a calculator. iPads don't come with calculators. Calculator. Okay, there we go. We're going to get the square root of 289. So... Um, 289 squared. 17. Goodness gracious. So the square root of 289 happens to be, uh, let me see, 289 equals C squared. We're going to square root both sides. We end up with 17 equals C. Okay. So CR equals 17. CR equals 17 is your answer. All right. Whew. Okay. Uh, explain to the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, uh, we're just using it in reverse, just like we did before with the converse of the other uh, line theorems. We need to find the length of AB in this case, right? So if we know that AD is 10 uh, and BD is 6, okay? So we have effectively, I'm going to draw a very crude triangle like this again. We have, we have the hypotenuse and we have one of the sides. And so let's fill out... The, uh, let's fill out the Pythagorean theorem. Excuse the, the screaming baby in the background. So it's going to be uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We have the c squared, right? The c squared is the 10. So 10 squared. We have one of the sides. Um, we call it 6 squared. We don't know what the a squared is, right? So let's keep going. a squared plus 6 squared is 36. 10 squared is 100. So if we subtract 36 from both sides, we end up with a squared equals 64. We square root with both sides and we end up with a equals 8. Right? So we can say that the length of AB equals 8, effectively, using the Pythagorean theorem.